So we're going to start chapter 8 today. Okay, and our first section is on ratios and proportions. Okay, so let's say um, you have two quantities, okay? For now, I just call them A and B, and they're measured in the same units, okay? Measured in the same units. We can write down what's called a, a ratio. For example, let's say I had um, a piece of paper that was 10 inches long and a piece of paper that was 30 inches long. Okay? They're both measured in the same unit, inches. I could find the ratio and it would tell, many, tell me how many times bigger or smaller one piece of paper is than the other, okay? depending on how you write it. Um, so for example, if you wrote 30 inches divided by 10 inches, that would give me 3. And that would tell me that the bigger piece of paper is three times larger than the smaller. Okay, so that's a ratio. We can write it a few different ways. As a fraction. Okay, a lot of times when we want to simplify it, that's how we do it. Remember that b can't be 0 because you can never divide by 0. Or you can write it um, a colon b, the ratio of a to b. Sometimes you see things written this way when you talk about um, get into probability when you talk about like the odds of, of winning something like 10 to 1 odds or 5 to 1 odds you might see 5 colon 1 okay even on maybe um, I'm trying to think on a scratch ticket I think they tell you your odds of winning you know, it might be like 1 in 100 or 1 in 200 okay I don't know if they use the colon um, but I think they use the word 2 or out of 1 out of 100 okay. yeah so it's the same same idea. You've seen the idea of ratios um, used a lot. Okay, ratios are always expressed or usually expressed in simplest form. Okay, that means you want to reduce it. So if you had a ratio that was 2 to 4, you'd want to reduce it 1 to 2, 1 half. Okay, you might also use ratios when you're cooking. Like Let's say you had a recipe that... Um, needed a certain amount of, I don't know, cups of flour, and you wanted to scale that up for a larger batch. Okay. Well, you could use a, a ratio to figure out, all right, if I scale that up, cups of flour, I've got to scale every ingredient up. Water, you know, syrup, whatever, whatever you're putting in it. You've got to scale everything up by the same amount. Right? So you could use the idea of ratios to do that. Okay, let's take a look at some ratios and... Simplify them. And when we simplify it, I'm going to point out something important here. What, what does A simplify to? 12 centimeters divided by 4 centimeters. Yeah? Three. Just three. Just three. Yep. So the centimeters cancels out. Because when you have centimeters in the top, centimeters in the bottom, it cancels. And how do you know like the unit of measurements? Like a ratio does not measure something in units. A ratio, like I said, it, an example would be if I had a piece of paper that was 10 inches and a piece of paper 30 inches, and I did 30 divided by 10 and got 3, all it tells me is 3 times bigger. It's not 3 centimeters bigger, it's 3 times the size. That's all that it, all that it represents. Okay? Any, any question on that? Notice the units were the same. That's very important. You can write it 3 to 1, right? Yeah, there's different, different ways you could write it. Um, you could write it 3 colon 1, or you could just write 3. Um, for this one, I'll just write 3. Okay? Sometimes you also leave it as a fraction. If it doesn't reduce nicely, leave it as whatever the fraction comes out to. Don't write 0.5. Just leave it as a fraction. Okay. What are you going to be careful of in B? Right. Okay. If you're working with ratios, the units have to be the same. So two choices. One, either change everything to inches or change everything to feet. 
Okay. So what do you want to um, what do you want to do in this case? Inches. Change feet to inches. Okay. So we're going to keep the bottom is inches. How many inches in six feet? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. It doesn't matter if you change everything to inches or you change everything to feet. You're going to get the same answer. And now we divide it out. 72 divided by 18 comes out nice. 4. So the ratio of those two numbers is 4 to, it's like 4 to 1. One of them is 4 times the size of the other. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. If there's a conversion you don't know, you really didn't know, um, that part I could, I could help you with on the test. <coughs> Um, but I'm going to give you basic, basic ones you should know. Okay, so we have three yards over six feet. Okay, what could I change everything to here? Feet. Okay, we'll change to feet. All right, uh, Denver, how many feet in three yards? Nine. nine. So nine feet. Now that we've got the units matching, we can simplify it. Katrina, what's 9 6 to simplify to? Um, 3 over 2. 3 over 2. That's the ratio of 9 feet to 6 feet. It's a ratio of 3 to 2. No label. Okay, no label on that. Think of the feet. Same thing in the top, same thing in the bottom. Cancels out. Okay, last one. Let's do one with um, time. Eight minutes to 12 minutes, okay, it's already the same units. So we just need to reduce this to simplest form. Um, Selena, what does that reduce to? So you, what did you divide eight by to get two? Four, so divide 12 by four, three. So. Eight minutes to 12 minutes, that's a ratio of two to three. Okay, two over three. Okay, any question on taking a ratio, making sure the units are the same, and then reducing? Okay. All right, so earlier I think somebody said, can you write it with the word two? And, and exactly, we've already been doing that, or saying that. Okay, so if you've got two numbers in a ratio of 3 to 2, that's like saying 3 colon 2, or writing 3 divided by 2. They all mean the same thing. Can somebody give me another ratio that would be the same as 3 to 2. It won't be reduced, but it would be something before you reduce it. Yeah, you could do 6 to 4. Okay, you could do 12 to 8. You could multiply each one of these by 10 and write 30 to 20. There's all kinds of ratios that would all reduce to 3 to 2. So I'm going to figure out a pattern. Okay. What those, how we could write all these ratios using a variable. Look at the top number in every case. The top number is a multiple of what? Uh, it's not a multiple of 6, because 9 is not a multiple of 6. But it, yeah, the top number is a multiple of 3. Okay. What's the bottom number? Two. Multiple of what? 2. two. Okay, the bottom number is always a multiple of 2. Right? So if you wanted to represent something that was always a multiple of 3, what you could do is write it like this. 3 times something. 3 times something will automatically be a multiple of 3 over 2 times something. Okay, and this, in general, is how you can represent all the ratios of 3 to 2. Okay. What would x be in this first fraction? What would you have to make x here to make what I just circled come out as 6 over 4? Yeah? Yeah, if you make x 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4. There's that ratio. What would you have to make x to make it come out to the second fraction? Yeah, make it 4. 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 4 is 8. 
right? For any ratio that you give me that's in the ratio 3 to 2, I can write it just like this. I can find a value of x that'll come out to the ratio you're thinking of. Any question on that idea? What if you wanted to represent all the ratios that were 1 to 5? How would you write that as a fraction? All the ratios that are 1 to 5. Yeah? 1x over 5x. Yeah, 1x over 5x. You can think of any ratio you want in your head that's 1 to 5. And I guarantee you I can find a value for x that comes out to what you're thinking of. Whether you write 2 over 10, or 10 over 50, or 100 over 50, I'm sorry, 10 over 50, yeah, okay. However, however you want to do it, we can come up with a value for x that'll make it, make it work. Right, so we're going to use that idea in some problems. All right, so this problem says the perimeter of a rectangle is 60 centimeters. Right, so if you add up the perimeter, you get 60 centimeters. It says the ratio of side AB, which is the length, to BC, which is the width, is 3 to 2. Okay. So the ratio of the length to width is 3 to 2. I want to find what the length and the width of the rectangle are. So first thing I should figure out is the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Okay. What's the formula for the perimeter of that shape? We'll use the letters the way I've labeled them. Length times width. Uh, that's the area. Oh. So yeah, area would equal length times width. Oh. Uh, length. Yep, length. Two, two L. Yep, so we have a length and a length. We have two of them. Plus, we have a width and a width. We have two of them. Okay, so there's your formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. Now, we know the perimeter. How much is the perimeter? 60. All right, so we can at least fill that in. The problem is we've got to come up with something for L and W. And that's where the, the next sentence comes in. The ratio of AB to BC, or the ratio of length to width, is 3 to 2. We don't know exactly which ratio it is, though. It could be exactly 3 over 2, could be 6 over 4, could be 12 over 8. We don't know which ratio it is. So I need a way to represent all the ratios that are 3 to 2. Right. Length to width. So how can I represent all the ratios that are 3 to 2. Yeah? 3x over 2x. 3x over 2x. This is how you represent every single ratio that's 3 to 2. So now, look at what length is represented by. Length is in the top on this side. 3x is in the top on this side. So we're going to represent the length as 3x. How are we going to represent the width? Connor? It's going to be 2x. Uh, 2x. Yeah. Represent your length as 3x. Represent your width as 2x. And you're guaranteed to get length to width in a ratio of 3 to 2. Okay. We don't know what x is. That's what we're going to find out. Okay. So there's your length. There's your width. Fill them in. Fill in the 60 for perimeter and see what we get. So 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Okay, Jacob, what's 2 times 3x? 6x. Yep. 2 times 2x. 4x. And then 6x plus 4x. 8x. So 6 plus 4 gives me 10x. Now my last step, um, about Brian, what would I do to finish that up? Divide 60 by 10. Good. Divide each side by 10. Those cancel. And 
Tanner, what's 60 divided by 10? 6. 6. Okay. So now I know x is 6. Is, um, is that the answer to their question? Alyssa? No. They said find the length and find the width. <coughs> so Alyssa, what would my length be? It would be 18. Good. 3 times 6. And my width? 12. 12. Let's check it. Is 18 divided by 12, does that reduce to 3 over 2? You think, Luke? Yes. Is that, yeah. If you divide by 6 and by 6, you get 3 over 2. So the ratio is good. Let's check the perimeter. If you double the length, because you get two of them, you get 36. Double the width, because you have two of them, you get 24. And then if you add 36 and 24, you get exactly what we wanted. Right? Any questions how we did that? So we found the length and width based on the perimeter and based on them being in a certain ratio. Okay? So that's the whole key. That's where people get stuck. You've got to set up your generic ratio using the variables. All right, let's try this one. It says the measures of the angles in triangle JKL are in the extended ratio. Okay, an extended ratio is when we've got more than two. Okay, so far we've only been comparing two numbers. Now we're going to compare three. Okay. So the angles in this triangle are in a ratio of one to two to three. That means one angle is <coughs> double one of them, the other angle is triple one of them. How could I set up this extended ratio generically? Because we don't know if it's, you know, one to two to three. Are those the actual sizes of the angles, or is it 10 to 20 to 30? So how would we set this up generically? We've got to get the variable in there. Oh, yeah, no, 10, 10 to 2 to 3, or 10 to 20 to 30. Yeah, I just wrote it. Instead of the colon, I could put the colon if, that, if that's easier to understand. Yeah? Would it be 1x over 2x, and then uh, as well as 2x over 3x? Since we've got three of them, let's write it with colons. So that way we can all keep it on the same line. Can you do it... Um, can you do it that way? 1x colon 2x colon 3x. Perfect. 1x colon 2x colon 3x. This is how you represent every possible ratio in this triangle where the angles are 1 to 2 to 3. 1x, 2x, 3x. Basically, just take your ratio and put an x with each number. Now, these represent the three angles. We've got to know something else about the angles in a triangle. Knowing their ratio isn't enough, because I couldn't make the angles 10, 20, and 30. It fits this ratio. One angle is double the first one. The next angle is triple the first one. But there's a reason why 10, 20, and 30 could never be the angles in a triangle. What else do we have to know? Oh, Rose? Back to triangles. What do you know about all the angles in a triangle? They all add up to 180. Yeah. Okay. So this represents the first angle. This is the second angle. This is the third angle. All of them added up together half the total 180. Okay. So again, one angle is double the first one. The other angle is triple. But we don't know exactly how much. Now, because we know the angles add up to 180, we're going to figure out exactly what x is. Okay. Um, so how about, Nick, what's 1x plus 2x plus 3x? 6x. Good. 6x. And my last step? 
Good. Divide by 6. And if we do 180 divided by 6, we get 30. Okay, so now it says find the measure of each angle. Okay, we know x is 30. So let's just write angle. Actually, did they have letters? Yeah, let's do j. Let's write it up here. Measure of angle j. Measure of angle k. Measure of angle l. So if x is 30, how much is the smallest angle, which looks like it's j? Not 90. So how much is it? 10. Yeah. 30. 30. The smallest angle was 1x. x is 30. 1 times 30. Okay. Sarah, how much would my second angle be, which is represented by 2x? How much? Well, it can't be 30. The second angle is double the first. Because x, so yeah, x is 30. So 30 times 2 is 60. Now the third angle is triple the first. x is 30. 3 times 30, 90. There's, that's the only way that you could have three angles in a triangle in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 3 have to add up to 180. It's the only way you could do it. 30, 60, 90. Okay. Any question on that? All right, so it all just comes down to setting up that kind of generic ratio. Okay. All right, let's look at this one. This one says the ratio of the side lengths of triangle DEF so the corresponding sides in triangle ABC are 2 to 1. They're in a ratio of 2 to 1. So in this case, you're comparing <coughs> big triangle to small triangle. If you flipped it, it wouldn't be a ratio of 2 to 1. It would be 1 to 2. Okay? You'd be switching the numbers. But in this case, you're comparing big triangle to small triangle. And they're in a ratio of 2 to 1. Okay, let's find all the unknown lengths. Anybody see we have one, two, three, four things we need to find? Anybody see one of them we could find? Luke? Um, the length of the big okay, uh, can you name it for me? Um, line DF. Segment DF, sure. What's segment DF? Uh, six yeah, it's six inches. Because we know in the big triangle, Everything is in a ratio of 2 to 1. It's double the smaller triangle. OK, what else could I find? Yep. AV is 4. AV is 4. Same reason. If you take the number in the smaller triangle and double it, you get the larger triangle. Now, we don't have CB or FE. So how are we going to get that? And I think we've, we've talked about this theorem before. Yeah? CB is 5. All right, how'd you get that? Doing the Pythagorean theorem. Perfect. You've got to do the Pythagorean theorem to get the third side. Now, you, do you have to do it twice? No. No. You only have to do it once because you know the relationship is 2 to 1. So if you do it in the smaller one, get the answer. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals, we'll just call it, Segment CB squared. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. Add those together. And what would be your last step to undo squaring something? Perfect. You're going to take the square root. Take the square root. And that's how EN got 5. Okay, so CB is 5 units long. Or 5 inches. Now I could do the whole Pythagorean theorem again. 6 squared plus 8 squared. And or use the ratio. How long is segment FE? 10. Ratio of 2 to 1. It's double the smaller. Okay. Any question on that? All right. 
Okay, if you take uh, two ratios and you put them together with an equal sign between them, so take a fraction, put it on the left, fraction on the right, put an equal sign between them, that's a proportion. Okay, so pretend AB is a ratio, CD is a ratio, put an equal sign between them. Now we just set up a proportion. Okay, in a proportion, A and D, two that are on the diagonal that's right there, those are called the extremes. Okay, going the other way, B and C, those are called the means. Right, so A and D are extremes, B and C are means. Right, so I might just ask you that on a test. I'll give you a proportion. I'll put, put some variables, put some numbers in those spots, and I'll just say, what are the extremes? Right, so you start in the upper left, go towards the lower right. Those are your extremes. Okay, means, start on the bottom of the left, go towards the top on the right. Okay, so some important properties about proportions. Well, first one, the one we use most often is the cross product property, okay, which says if you take the product of the extremes and take the product of the means, they're equal. They come out exactly the same in a proportion. Okay, so how would you write that? For this, if you did the cross product property here, it would say what times what equals what times what. Uh, Olivia? And it's not going to be a number, it's going to be all variables. Okay, what are your extremes there? A and D. A and D. And if you multiply them together, what do you get? A times D, AD. Okay, what are your means? B and C. B and C, and if you multiply those together, what do you get? B times C. B times C. And it says to take and put an equal sign between them. Okay, so that's the cross product property. A times D equals B times C. We use that all the time when we're trying to solve something like this. If you wanted to solve this equation, you'd do 3 times 6 equals 2 times x. And you get a very, very simple equation to solve for x. All right, let's look at another property. Okay, the reciprocal property. Okay, if two ratios are equal to each other, then if you flip each one of them, they're still equal to each other. Right? So if A over B equals C over D, you're allowed to flip each side if you want to. You can make it B over A equals D over C. Okay, that's called the reciprocal property. Do you think it'd be okay if you just flipped one side and left the other one the same? Rose? No. no. Look what happens if you multiply the means and extremes. They're still the same. In the first one, A and D are on a diagonal. B and C are on a diagonal. Look what happens when you flip it. A and D, still multiplying those together. They're still on a diagonal. B and C, still on a diagonal. So you can do anything you want to this proportion. As long as A and D still stay on a diagonal from each other, and B and C stay on a diagonal. And flipping each side is one thing that works. Okay, so when we go to solve a proportion, that's where we'll use the cross product property. Okay? I kind of already showed you an example up above, but now we'll, um, we'll go through one. Yeah, let's try this one. So it says 4 over x equals 5 over 7. You don't have to tell me what x is, but who can tell me, just using the cross product property, I'll have what 
equals what? Vote, James. All right, so good. You did five times x equals so we're multiplying together, right? So five times x goes on one side, four times seven goes on the other. Okay, how many people have already solved proportions before? Remember doing it? Yeah, you do that in algebra, algebra one. Just checking. So, any question on the cross-product cross property there? Okay, now how do I, um, Nathan, how do I finish that up? It's my last step. Uh, you divide by five. Yep, divide by five. Since that doesn't reduce nicely, just leave it as 28 over five. Okay, how about in this one? There's a certain property that's going to come up here. You've got to be careful. Anybody see what property I'm going to have to use? Yep. I'm going to have to use distributive. So my suggestion is right away, if you ever have a numerator or denominator that has two things in it, put parentheses around it right away. Because when you cross multiply, from that one you get 3 times y equals, and now do this one, 2 times what's in the bottom of this other fraction y plus 2. But it's not just 2 times the y or 2 times the 2. It's 2 times both of them. Okay. So we got to do a distributive property. So we get 3y equals. Uh, Luke, what do I get when I do the distributive property here? 2y plus 4. Good. Last step. Bring the 2y to the other side. And 3y take away 2y gives me 1y, and I'm left with 4 on the right-hand side. Okay, so that, that will come up. So anytime, again, my hint on the test, if you see something with two terms in it, put parentheses around it, so when you cross-multiply, you don't forget the distributive property. Okay. Any questions on that? All right. Okay, so here is a um, picture of a painting. And I've labeled it as 8 inches on the width, 4 and a half inches on the height. Okay, and it's a scale image. The actual painting has a width of 36 inches. Okay. Using this scaled down version and knowing the actual width, I can find the actual height. Okay, so what I need to do is set up a proportion. And you want to set it up so it's the same on each side. So there's four things we're looking at here. The scaled width, scaled height, actual width, actual height. Those are the four, four things. And I think we know three of them. So we can set it up like this. Scale width, we'll put that right there. Scaled height, we'll put that right there. Now we've got to set it up the same way on the other side. So what do you think is going to go in the top? Actual width or actual height? Yeah, Selena? Right, if you put width in the top on the left, you've got to put width in the top on the right. So actual width over actual height. There's many ways you could set this up. Okay? You could have each one of these flipped. That's the reciprocal property. Scale height over scale width. But then you'd have to flip this side too. Actual height over actual width. Right? Let's fill in those four numbers. Um, and what's the scaled width of this painting? 4.5. Jacob, um, what's the scaled height? Four 
So the width was four and a half, the height is eight. Now, with it, how, it depends, however you want to look at it. I mean, width, height, usually width is a smaller dimension, length is the longer dimension. But just be consistent. Okay, um, Denver, what's the actual width of the painting? 36 inches. The actual painting has a width of 36. What is the actual height? We don't know. That's what we're finding. Okay, what's the name of the property I'm going to use right now to solve that? That's okay. We set it up consistently, though. As long as, I mean, usually width is usually shorter than height. Usually, like if you're talking about length and width, length is longer, width is shorter. But, but it's yeah, it's the way this painting was set up. But that's that's okay. So as long as as long as you set it up the same way on the other side, consistently, it'll come out okay. All right. So now we're gonna. Cross multiply, 36 times 8, you get 288. Divide each side by 4 and a half, and see what we get. So you get 64. Okay, so the actual height of that painting is 64 inches. So when you fill in your proportion, just set it up the same, same way on each side. If you do width over height, do width over height. All right, and last thing I'll give you is just a couple formulas from section 8.2, all about proportions. Both of these properties you're allowed to do with proportions. What they did um, in example one is they switched B and C. That's fine to do. You can switch B and C. The point is, look at the original. A and D are on the diagonal. Are A and D still on the diagonal? Yep, that's OK. B and C were on the diagonal. Are B and C still on a diagonal? Yep, then that's OK. If all of a sudden, a and B ended up on a diagonal. Now something's wrong. Okay. All right. And the second and last property we'll look at is if you have A over B equals C over D, you are allowed to add the denominator to the top of each fraction, and it won't change the answer. Okay, why you would want to do that depends on the problem. So if you take A and add the denominator to it in the top, if you take C and add its denominator to it in the top, and you solve that proportion, the answer you'd get would come out exactly the same as the original. Okay, so those are two properties you're allowed to do. Put them on your reference sheet for the test. So if I ask you, are you allowed to do this? You'd say, yes, if I wrote it just like this. If I switched it around a little bit, like I decided to add one denominator to the top of a different fraction, that pattern doesn't work. You have to follow the exact pattern I have right on the board. Take that denominator, add to the top of that, D, add it to C. All right, so just look at A, and we'll finish up with that. Tell me if that is true or false. And a quick way to tell, what do you get if you multiply p times 10? 10. 10p. 10 what about 6 times r? 6r. Six r. Six r. Let's check this one. p times 5? Five. 5p. Five 3 times r? 3r. If you divide each side by 2 of that one, do you get the same thing that we have on this side? Yeah, yeah that's true. 
So you can do that. These two are exactly the same thing. Just check your cross products. That's the quickest way to do it without worrying about which formula did you use. Just check your cross products. Okay. And that one, let's just check quick. I added 3 to A. Yep, we said we could do that. I added 4 to C. Uh, nope. That's a problem. I don't know what, that's not a rule that I just gave you. If I had done plus 4, that would have been okay. <coughs> what I wrote there, not okay. So try, um, try that for homework tonight. There's no MCAS since you already finished it. And we'll go over what we can before the test tomorrow. Okay, so the homework, uh, it's on 461. It's 11 to 17 all, 21, 25 to 35 odd, 39 and 43. Uh, then on 468, uh, try 9 through 16 all.